uh, they, they can't mm. change. Uh, they're already old. Uh, they're nearly approaching uh, their death, so they might as well continue to eat meat and uh. like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the black people don't believe you. The white people are okay with it, but the old people say, nah, so I'm already almost dead. So just it doesn't yeah. matter. I'm just going to eat meat. Yeah. This is The Living Numbers Podcast, and I am your host, Tony Rambles. This is the place where everyone's interesting if you ask the right questions. Now, before we start, of course, I have my four appeals, 20 seconds, ready, set, go. Number one, rate, review, five stars, wherever you listen to podcasts. Number two, Follow me on IG and TikTok at The Living Numbers Podcast. Number three, you can support the vision by purchasing merch uh, at The Living Numbers Pod Shop on Etsy. And of course, number four, subscribe on Apple and and, um, Spotify. There you can get extra episodes, behind the scenes content, those kind of things. And all of that will be in the link below. So with someone on for the first time, you all know we have to give them an elaborate introduction. So hailing from the United Kingdom, our guest is an incredible weight loss and wellness coach. His plant-based journey has helped him shed 77-ish pounds. I'm sure it fluctuates. It goes up and down in just nine months. Initially, he dropped that weight quick. And this not only reversed his chronic diseases, but also slowed down his aging process. So he makes sure he's not sick and he's aging in reverse. So next year, he'll be 17. (laughs) Since 2016, he hasn't had a single sick day. I'm interested in hearing more about that. He's done all of it using his three-step weight loss and wellness program. So whether you're looking to lose weight or not, just to increase your well-being, this guest is the guy for you. Speaker, author, weight loss and wellness coach, I present the Olivier Moncando. Did I say your name correctly? (laughs) Uh, Yes. Thank you very much for having me, Tony. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So let's get into our first number. So I was doing a little bit of research. And I know BMI used to be the, um, it's how they measured if somebody was obese or overweight, that kind of thing, which when I started looking today, uh, it has kind of changed to something else called waist to height ratio. And so typically the United States will be at the top of every category. What's the most obese country? You know, you find the U.S. at number one, <laughs> but <laughs> under this different metric, they had us at number 12, which is our first number. So I was like, cool, we're not the baddest country in the world <laughs> anymore <laughs> in some ways. So for the first question, what are some challenges that you faced maintaining a healthy weight and managing your wellness before you made the diet change? Yeah, so uh, before uh, my diet change, it was uh, really difficult. Uh, because uh, I had a lot of uh, ailment. Uh, my health was not uh, good mm. at all. Uh, I was suffering from um, high blood pressure. And uh, people need to understand that uh, high blood pressure, it's a very bad uh, chronic disease uh, because uh, 50% of heart disease and strokes and kidney failures, heart failures are created by high blood pressure. So I was suffering from high blood pressure. And I even remembered I uh, spent a day and a half uh, in uh, hospital because my uh, blood pressure went uh, to the roof. And uh, I was suffering mm. from headaches as well. So every day or every other day, I had to have some uh, headaches. And to uh, remedy for that, I would take some, I was buying some um, uh, painkillers that I would always have that uh, in uh, my wallet. I also had dandruff. So, for example, if I will comb my hair, you will see dandruffs all over the place. I had back pain. And, for example, I remember I spent a week at home 
I couldn't go to work anymore because my back was uh, really killing me. I had some abscesses mm. every single week. I had some abscesses. I had some uh, joint pain, uh, heartburn, and especially when I was eating bean, beans. And um, because of my bad eating habit, because uh, I would eat even up to uh, midnight, I would have my bottle of Coca-Cola with some biscuit and stuff like that. And because of that, uh. I had uh, lots of problems with uh, my teeth. So every two to three months, I had to see uh, the dentist. And on top of that, my uh, weight for, was 220 pounds. And uh, here in the UK, I don't think that the BMI has changed. It's still, um, if your BMI is over 30, you are classed as obese. And my BMI was 32 at that time. So uh, basically, mm. that's uh, what I was going through. And uh, I, was, I was always tired, always. And um, that's why, for example, when I was uh, on the day where I had to go to work, I would drag myself out of bed. And on the day when I was not going to work, I would sleep until 1 p.m. in, 1 p.m. in the afternoon because I was so tired all the time. And um, I remember the la last place where I was working because I was working as an um, a optical lab technician. And um, the lab was in the basement, so I had to climb the stairs all the time and I was always out of breath. Uh -huh. So basically that's what was uh, my situation before uh, my change of uh, diet. Sleeping until 1 p.m. I mean, that's yeah. the first thing I thought of is my parents would have dragged us. Out. There is no <laughs> way they would let us sleep until 1 p.m. It was always like, get up, get outside. You can't stay inside all on the video game. You know, this is obviously on a weekend. Um, yeah. But I think we can all kind of relate to to dragging ourselves out of bed sometimes. How long did this go on? Like, how long would you say? Was it months, years? How many years did you feel like this all the time? Yeah, uh, I think I started to feel this way when I left uh, because I'm originally from the Democratic Re Republic of Congo, and I think I mm. started myself starting to get worse when I left uh, Congo because over there I uh, was not eating too much processed food and stuff like that. It was mostly uh, whole food, uh, even though uh, I was eating animal product and all that, but uh, I didn't have too, too much of uh, processed food. But when I left uh, Congo, it was in 1999, it's at that time that my health starting to get uh, worse. Uh, I started to put on weight and uh, with all the food that uh, <laughs> We have in this country, so uh, milk, uh, dairy products, and all the, the mm. candies and sodas and all that. So it's uh, basically junk. at that time that everything started. So I would say I've been in this situation for 17 years. So for 17 years, uh, I'm starting to uh, really my health was not good uh, at all. Yeah. 17 years, you felt like this bad all the time? Yeah. Wow, that's a long time to be in pain and suffering and sickness. How do you think that played into your social interactions with people, you know, with your friends, with your family? How do you think your health, your well-being, not just the eating part, but also just being in pain? How do you think that played into into you socially? Uh yes, so if I have to say socially, uh I for me it didn't uh, prevent me, uh, prevented me from uh, being around my family and stuff because in my mind, I thought that, okay, because I'm getting old, that's why uh, I'm, my body is not functioning properly anymore because that's what mm. we've been told, that as you age, you need to uh, get sick. And for me, it was uh, normal. And uh, like I've just said, I'm uh, originally from the uh, DRC. Uh, so uh, over there, when you are uh, fat, it's not a problem. I've never seen someone complain because this is fat. Never. And in, actually, when you are fat, it means that you've got a status, you are rich and stuff like that. So for me, it has never mm -hmm. been a problem. So when I was uh, around families, yes, I was tired all the time and stuff like that, having headaches. Uh, but what I was doing, it was I was just buying uh, medication, uh, the, the over-counter medication. I was taking that and that's it. So for me, it was uh, normal to be uh, sick uh, as you age. Did you try 
before we get into the plant-based stuff, did you ever try any other ways to get off of, you maybe drop the weight or get rid of your pain? Did you ever try any other things before you changed your diet? Yeah, no, never. For me, like I said, uh, being overweight, has never been a problem. There's never been a problem. It's just uh, the headaches, the tiredness, uh, all uh, my uh, bones were aching and, and all that. That was the problem. But my weight has never been a problem mm. in my mind. And uh, to combat all these things, I was taking uh, over-the-counter medication. Or, for example, for uh, my uh, the, my joint, we were aching. I, was, I would take some um, uh, Chinese vapor rub that I would uh, rub on my skin. And usually my, my wife was doing that for me. She would rub my back because uh, my back was killing me and all that. So, um, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, I've, I've never tried something because in my mind, first of all, losing weight was never uh, on, the, uh, on my mind. And uh, for my pain, I was just taking uh, uh, over-the-counter medication and uh, I never it never occurred to my mind to change my diet or something like that because for me, I knew that if you are sick, it's because you are getting old. It never crosses my mind that it could be something uh, different. So that's why I've never, I never tried something. Never. So you didn't connect the food and the sickness at all. No, no, <laughs> never. <laughs> Man, yes, that's it what never I, crossed my mind. The, the first thing I think of, like, if I don't feel well, okay, water. I, I, I drink more water. Get hydrated, you know. Um, that's always the first thing. So I don't, I don't know why. Cause I, maybe because our parents, they would just tell you to to drink some water, lay down. I'm not taking you to the hospital. We don't have any insurance. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, do you feel like do you feel like there were some things that you were taught by your your surroundings, your upbringing that made it that made it worse that you think would be different if you uh, I don't know, maybe live somewhere else or or your parents knew a different way? Yeah, definitely. Because um, like I said, um, in the way, in the culture, people just do what the majority of people do. So where I grew up, uh, people were uh, relying on um, uh, medication and all that. And uh, I mean, I left, uh, like I said, Congo in 1999. Uh, never it crosses my mind that food was a problem. Food was creating problem. My my mom, my dad, uh, my friends, no one was talking about that. So what we knew is just that uh, it's normal to be sick. And uh, when you are sick, you just take medication and that's it. So uh, I've never learned all this. The stuff that I know now, I've, I've never heard that uh, back home. So for example, uh, being vegan or being on on a plant based or vegetarian, I didn't even know that this word existed. So I, I never someone talked to me about things like that. Yeah. And what 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 years was this? Like what time frame are we talking? Uh, until uh, nineteen ninety nine. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It yeah, was a thing. Even when, but it's, even it's when I came. Even when I came here in, in, in England, uh, I didn't know that vegan existed. So it's just to, uh, from uh, 2016 when I did my transformation that I started to learn all these things. But before that, I didn't know anything. Mm. So let's jump into that. Let's go into our next number, which is $12.53. And that is how much the paperback version, I see you smiling, you know, the paperback version of your book costs, the plant-based nutrition, how it's going to change your life. So tell us about how you got here. What was the, the experience or the situation where you go, I have to do something differently? Yeah, yeah so uh, what happened is that uh, it was just a, a certain Wednesday in 2016. Uh, just randomly like that. I didn't know. I was just watching a program on YouTube. And uh, there was an Indian yogi who suggested that uh, by stopping eating uh, animal product, it was possible to reverse 70% of all the chronic diseases. 
And when I heard that, mm. I said to myself, but I'm not well, I'm not feeling well. What can I, maybe I can just try that. And because uh, that message was really captivating, and I said to myself, I have to do it. So I spoke to my wife and I told her that uh, I was going to stop eating meat and all that. So it was, like I said, a uh, certain Wednesday. On Thursday, I went to work. When I came back, I asked her to cook uh, me uh, my last meal of meat. And on Friday, I went cold turkey. So I stopped with all the mm. animal product, the dairy product and all that. And the week after, I was able to lose 11 pounds. Even though in my mind, when I, when I decided to stop eating meat, it was not to lose weight. That was not in my mind, like I was saying. Right. It's just all the, the pain that I was, I, I was having. So on that week, I lost 11 pounds. I was really, really surprised. Lost 11 pounds. And, but what was very difficult is that I went through a detox a symptoms. So on that week, my symptom worsened. I had, Mm -hmm. massive headaches that I've never had in my entire life for three days. I had more cold sore, more abscesses. My joint even ache even more. And even my wife uh, asked me to stop <laughs> because it was really bad. But I said, to, I said, no, 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 I will continue. I'm not going to stop. And that's what most people, when they uh, uh, switch to a plant-based uh, nutrition, they start uh, having all these detox symptoms, they will stop. And they will say, no, this is not good. Uh, maybe I, I'm not supposed to eat fruit. I'm not supposed to eat uh, uh, all these vegetables. I need to go back and on eating meat and all that. And uh, when oh, you do that, uh, your, your body, because that's how the body uh, detoxifies itself. That's how the body gets rid of toxins. It's going to make you sick and then you will get better. And for me, it lasted a week. After a week, I'm starting to feel uh, a lot better, a lot of uh, mental clarity, or a, a lot of energy. Because, like I've told you, I was always tired, and after that week, it was gone completely. And uh, I started to do lots of research, uh, reading lots of books, and that's why I started to uh, learn all these things. And uh, four months into my transformation, I went to see uh, my doctor, who told me that I will be on medication for the rest of my life. I went to see mm. him, and my blood pressure was completely gone. And uh, all the ailments that I've had, no headaches anymore. No back back pain, no uh, abscesses, no dental problems. Every single ailment was completely gone. And after uh, nine months, I was able to lose uh, 77 pounds. And uh, over the years, I've noticed that uh, I've been able to slow down my aging process as well because a lot of people, when they see me, they think that, oh, maybe I'm, I'm in my late 20s, but I'm actually 53. So... Mm. That's, that's uh, something that is uh, very, very good uh, for people if they want to reverse the aging process. So that's, uh, that's something that they can uh, consider. So in a nutshell, that's how uh, I was able to get out of uh, all this situation. So it was not something that I said, okay, now I need to stop. It's just by watching that program, which made a click. And I said, okay, I'm going to, to change. And I didn't even know if it was going to work. I didn't know, but yeah. <laughs> You just came to it was so that message is the thing that that changed it in your mind. Just hearing somebody speak. Yeah. Wow. I think that I mean, that's why that's why I do this so that those voices can get out there and whatever people have gone through and they need to share it with other people. Because I think that's I think we well, I think we all get to a point in life where we We've been through so much. We've done so much. And now we feel like other people are going through this. I have to share because if I could just help one person, you know, then then it's worth it. And then a lot of times you end up helping a lot more than that just because the heart is, is in it. So you talked about reversing the aging process. OK, a lot of people want to look younger. So how do you know that that's what it is? Yeah. So. Um... Because if even if you look at my uh, pictures, uh, my before and after picture, you will see it's like uh, day and night, it's like day and night. And uh, uh, because at that time, before my transformation, uh, I was fat, I was aging uh, quicker, uh, my body was not uh, working uh, properly. But since uh, changing uh, my way of eating, 
uh, I've been able to slow down my aging process. And why is that? Why am I saying that? It's because, uh, for example, uh, the way I eat now, I only eat twice a day. I don't have uh, any uh, snack in between, just uh, two meals. At, I eat at uh, 12 p.m. and at 7 p.m. And what's happening is that every time when you eat something, your body will produce insulin. And if you have too much insulin or you have insulin frequently in your body, this will uh, increase your aging process. You will age quicker. So a lot of insulin in your, in your body will make you age quicker. But because I only eat twice a day, and uh, when, you're not, uh, when you don't have insulin in your body, your body will produce what is called the human growth hormone, which will slow down your aging process. And because I only eat twice a day with no snacking in between, most of the time, my body is producing the human growth hormone. And that's why I'm uh, aging, uh, I've slowed down my aging process. And uh, when, as well, when you're, not, when you're eating the food biologically designed for the human mechanism, like the fruit, the vegetables, the legumes, grains, nuts, and seeds. These are food that are recognized by the body and they leave very little of uh, residue in your body compared to uh, the animal product, the dairy product, the processed food and all that. And your body will have to uh, work less and all the excess energy, your body will use that to heal and cleanse. And that's why you will start aging quicker and uh, sorry, you will eat uh, slower and uh, your body will function in a, a good way. And I forgot to say as well is that um, since uh, 2016 up to this day, and you said that in the, the, uh, the, the introduction that I've not been sick a single day and I've not taken a single pill for the past eight years, not even a painkiller. So it's good. So when you say you haven't been sick, you haven't gotten like the flu or these things that are kind of out of our control nothing like that not a cold yeah so uh in uh seven years for example i've never been at home uh sick where i can go i cannot go out because i'm not feeling well it's never happened okay only in seven years i've had uh, a running nose twice and it lasted a day or two days at the most but in the past when I was having a uh, uh, cold, it would last two weeks, a week, two weeks. But this time, it was not really something that I was blowing my nose, no. It was just a, bi a bit of running nose. Uh, it lasted, like I said, a day or something. And I had it uh, twice in uh, seven years. But never had a cough, never had the flu, nothing. Man, even with the, the um, uh, COVID and all that's never. I've, 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 not, I've not spent a day at home where I say, oh, I'm not feeling well, I need to sleep. Never. It's never happened for those uh, seven years. And it's all based on this eating differently. So what about, because when you say uh, that the body doesn't recognize animal products, um, what about when people hunted for their food and they went and they killed animals and ate them. I mean, and, and, you know, those people weren't getting sick like we are today. You know, I know you have talked a lot about processed foods, which is where I think this comes in because we're not eating the animals the same way that they ate the animals. It's different. But you, you talk a lot about the animal product and the processed foods. What Are those things different? like doing it how they did it, like hunters and gatherers and doing it how we do it now? And is that why it may have these adverse health effects? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, what I can say is that, um, first of all, when we look at uh, these uh, our ancestors in the past, first of all, they were not eating animal product every day like we do now. Now, in every meal that people have, they need to have some kind of animal product. Even the carnivores, who are designed to eat meat, they don't eat meat every day. For example, a lion will eat today, the next meal will be in four days or in a week. But for us human beings, we are not designed to eat meat, but we eat every single meal, we need to have some kind of animal product. This is the first big difference. And for example, these our ancestors, they were not eating meat every day. And when they will catch, for example, a kill, 
they will bring to the village and they will share that with all the village. So, which means that people who have just a little bit of meat and most of the meals were uh, um, produced. This is the first thing. And because of that, uh, they did it. it was not possible for them to have the uh, disease that we are suffering uh, today. And why am I saying that? It, for example, if you look at uh, a carnivore, you will see that the uh, intestine are very short. But when you look at uh, herbivores and human beings, we've got very long intestines. Because when you look, you will see that meat pass to the system, passes to the system very slowly. So, for example, uh, if you take uh, a piece of meat, you put that outside for three days. Because uh, before that, if, for example, you eat, um, uh, you take a piece of fruit, it takes three to three to four hours to pass through a system. If you eat uh, raw vegetables, it takes around twelve hours to pass through a system. You eat cooked vegetables, it takes between twenty-four and thirty hours to pass through a system. But if you eat meat, fish, or chicken, it takes seventy-two hours to pass through a system, because that's why I told you that meat passes to the system very slowly, and that's why. Carnivores have got very short intestine. And if, for example, you take a piece of meat, you leave that outside for three days. After three days, when it's hot, you will see that piece of meat will be in a rotting state. And when we people will eat meat, because in our bodies it's hot, it's 98 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, so it's hot. So the same rotting process that we see outside, it's exactly what's happening inside our gut when we eat meat. And that's why you will see some people smell bad because all this rotting stuff need to get, get out. And that's why the perfume, the deodorant have been invented. Or some people with some bad breath, they can brush their teeth as much as they want, but that odor is not going away because all this rotting stuff is trying to get out. And when, because the meat takes too long in the inside our system, it creates constipation because they've got no fiber and it gets reabsorbed into the bloodstream, and that's why people start suffering from high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer, Parkinson, arthritis, and all the autoimmune diseases where the body destroys itself, like the inflammatory bowel disease, the lupus, the psoriasis, the rheumatoid arthritis, and the list goes on. And to prove to you that we are not designed to eat meat, let's say, for example, uh, you are uh, at your house and uh, they put a cow in your garden. They give you no tools and they tell you that cow will be your food for the next two weeks. I don't think that you're going to be able to eat that cow if you don't have any tools to kill it. You're not going to be able to, to eat it. And because, first of all, you're not going to be able to kill it. It's you, you, you're not strong enough to kill a cow. And even if you were the strongest man and you killed that cow with your teeth, you're not going to be able to bite into that cow and start eating that. Which means that we are not biologically designed to eat meat. So if they give you that cow in that garden, they tell you that's your food, you're going to starve to death. But you put a lion in that same enclosure, he's going to be able to eat it. Which means that we are not biologically designed to eat meat. But let's say there's an apple tree, you can climb that apple tree, you don't need a knife, you don't need nothing, you can take that apple and eat that. So that's why I'm saying that people eat meat, yes, but we are not biologically designed to eat meat, and that's why it creates lots of damage. And to, re to come back again, in the past, it was not creating lots of damage because this, our ancestor was not eating too much meat like we do today. And something else that I need to add is that they were killing these animals in the forest, but now the animals that we eat, they are uh, grown in an uh, agriculture farm where they give them lots of antibiotics to make them grow very quickly so that they can sell them. So there's lots of stuff that uh, make that uh, the, the meat is not good anymore uh, if you have to compare to the, what our ancestors were doing. Well, what about the people who do eat meat who are perfectly healthy, who don't have all of those issues and ailments you know what would you say uh, to those people or to that you know lifestyle yeah what uh, i will tell you uh, about that is that when you eat meat and um, 
you're not going to get sick straight away. It takes years. It's like me. Uh, I'm starting to feel all the, um, the adverse effect of uh, meat consumption when I was uh, 30 or something like that. So it takes a long time before you start uh, feeling all these negative effects because our body is very resilient. And some people, even they can reach their 50s, they still look uh, in good health. But the problem is when you look at these people, when they are in the, most people, first of all, when they are in their 40s, they are on some kind of medication. Most people, they are on some kind of medication. And in fact, uh, I've uh, I, uh, had a study which says that 75% of uh, the world population is sick. Why is that? It's because most people are taking some kind of medication. So if even for you, if you look uh, in your close uh, circle, you will see that most people, they take medication. And this is not right. So if someone is uh, eating meat and is taking medication, it means that is not in good health. Because being in good health doesn't mean that you are slim. You can be slim and be unhealthy. And for example, I'll give you uh, the definition of, of someone who is, in, is healthy. A healthy person has little, if any, body odor. They have no bad breath, no food odor. Their urine and stool do not smell. They sleep soundly. They have no skin rashes or dandruff. They are not depressed or stressed. They are rarely, if ever, get colds, flu, heartburn aches and pains, truly healthy people are full of energy and vitality and never have to take any non-prescription or prescription drugs because they never have any symptoms that will require them to take a drug. So if you take, for example, for me, I check all these boxes, but if you take someone who eat meat, maybe you will see they take some medication, maybe uh, they still uh, smell bad, maybe uh, they've, they're suffering from constipation. So they, 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 they will have something, which means that there's something wrong. And when you look, for example, at the uh, blue zone, uh, the people who live the longest, you will see that uh, their diet is mostly uh, plant-based. Yes, they eat a little bit of meat, but mostly plant-based. And for example, the, 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 uh, some people, they will say, okay, uh, I, I eat meat and, and all that. But for example, if you have to look at someone who eat meat and like me, seven years, n never been sick, you don't take any medication. You don't see these people everywhere. Mm. I would push back and say that there are other habits and other lifestyle choices that do contribute to poor health that are not being taken into account as well. So like if somebody doesn't eat meat, but they don't exercise at all and they drink a lot of wine, that may skew it one way or, or the other. You know, so I think that there are a lot of things that go into health and, and well-being along with your diet, because I definitely believe like we do need to eat a lot more uh, fruits and vegetables than we do anything else. And the biggest thing for me because I've made my own dietary changes over the years, is the processed foods. I feel like sugar in the processed foods are the things that have the most adverse effect on, on our health, as opposed to meat. You know, so I, you know, you, you have written your book and you've done your research and your own life story, I mean, tells it all. But I think that each person is different. So there are some degrees of variance that has to be taken into account. But more fruits, more vegetables, and less medication, more plant-based stuff is definitely, uh, I don't think there's an argument against it. And so you just said it yourself, like some, there are the healthiest people, they do eat some meat, but they make sure that most of their, most of their intake is that plant-based stuff. Would you would you say that that's pretty much on base? If somebody couldn't do like fully plant based, they're not able, they're not willing to commit to that. 
what would you say like some of those healthy choices could be that you could change? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I'm talking a, a, a little bit more about the uh, food because um, uh, that's what uh, I think most people are not in good yeah. health because of the food first. The food play, plays course. a very big role. But definitely, if you don't exercise, that's not good. If you don't uh, take care of your mental state as well, that's not good. And I would, I would even argue that the mental state is even more important than the food because uh, you can yes. eat very good food, you can eat clean, you can eat plant-based, but if you don't have, you don't entertain positive emotions in your mind, you're going to be sick. So the mind mm. is very uh, important. And that's why, for example, I uh, in my three, uh, three-step three weight loss, I talk about uh, the mental health, the mental uh, mind, the mindset first, then the nutrition, and then uh, the digestive rest. But the mental is very, very important because I, I personally, I think that we are um, uh, spiritual beings having a, a physical mm -hmm. experience. So the uh, mental part or the spiritual part plays a bigger role. For example, you can eat the good food, but if you entertain uh, uh, emotions like uh, anger, uh, jealousy, hatred, envy, and stuff like that, you will be sick regardless of what you eat. So this is mm. very, very important as well. Uh, it, it's just because we are, we're talking about food, I forgot to mention that, but this is very important. So it's not only the uh, food, but you need to add all these things because we are a whole. So you need to add the food, you need to add uh, the mindset, you need to add the exercise, you need to add all these things together to have optimal health. You cannot just eat good and you forget about the rest. No, you, you're going to be sick. You need to put all these things uh, together. And uh, if someone cannot, uh, because I'm not necessarily asking people to um, stop completely eating uh, meat, but what I'm saying is mm. that the less meat you eat, the better your health will be. But the processed mm. food as well plays a big role. And I would even argue that it's maybe even more than uh, animal product because when you look at what we eat as a race, 51% of what we eat is processed food. 42% are animal product and mm. only 7% are fruit and vegetables. So if we eat more processed food, and that's why the processed food destroys us more, more. Because in the processed food, you've got the coloring, the flavoring, the preservative, which has chemical substances mm -hmm. not recognized by the body, and they create havoc. Right. And that's what I keep saying to people. If you want to be in good health, you need to stay away from man-made man food. If you stay away from that, it's good. Because even meat, it's something that uh, has been created right. by the universe, but not processed food. Processed food is man-made. You need to stay away from that. Okay. Um, I think this is a good, good spot to go into uh, our next number and kind of the last part of the thing that I want to talk to you about. Uh, when your wife uh, started to do it with you, she saw you drop that 11 pounds, I think, in that, in that first week, and she jumped on board based on what I, what I researched, and she eventually dropped 99 pounds. So part of what you do, like we talked about earlier, is helping other people to be able to do this too. So when did you first realize, okay, I think I have a business on my hands, being able to help other people do what I'm doing. When did you first realize that? And then what was the first step to kind of moving forward with that business? Yeah, so it was um, like uh, my, my uh, transformation started in 2016. It's only in 2018 that uh, I said to myself, I've seen enough. Now I need to share that to other people. Because mm. I couldn't understand to see people suffering. And because they told us that uh, when we age, we need to be sick. For example, me, uh, until 46, I was sick. Now I'm 53. My health is better. So it's never the age. It's what we eat. 
And that's why I said to myself that people could be, um, it was possible for people to live a disease-free life. And uh, because mm. I was so motivated, I said to myself, I will start to uh, talk to people to try and tell them that they need to change their way of eating. They need to change their mindset. They need to change all these things so that they, uh, they will have optimal health. And uh, at that time, I, I said to myself, okay, the first thing for me is to start talking. So that's why uh, yeah. I, I became a speaker. I was starting to go in churches. I was starting to have speaking engagement where I can share this message to tell people that, hey, uh, being sick is not normal. The default is being in good health. And if you take care of your, um, your mental health, you take care of your, the food that you eat, uh, you take care of your uh, physical body in, in the sense that you, uh, you exercise. And when I say exercise, you don't necessarily need to join a gym. You can do walking. Like me, I don't go to the gym. Mm -hmm. What I do every Sunday, I will walk. Uh, I will walk, go for a, a two-hour walk. Uh, and um, every day when I wake up, I will do uh, five, minute, uh, five or ten-minute uh, stretching exercise. I'll go on my uh, uh, rebounder. I will jump for five, ten minutes. And uh, usually in the afternoon, uh, I have a, a treadmill. I will uh, walk uh, for for 13 minutes and run for four minutes. So that's all I do. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I wanted to really, really uh, to tell people that uh, there's a better way. And that's why I'm starting to, uh, uh, to speak, my speaking uh, business. And after that, people starting to ask me if I could help them and, and all that. And that's why I had the idea to start uh, my coaching program where I help people uh, mm. to uh, lose weight and to reclaim their health. So what are some of the challenges that you face uh, with your speaking and coaching and trying to, I guess, you know, stay busy and make money? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, what I found a little bit difficult, uh, for example, in uh, when I go to speak to uh, black people, most of them, they don't believe in what I'm saying uh, because mm. they... <laughs> I don't know, but they, they are re they really, really like animal product and all that. So uh, it's like, it's just like I'm uh, just talking to, to people who don't want to listen. And uh, this is uh, black people in general and in my uh, community uh, from uh, people from the uh, DRC. Uh, they mm. even think that maybe I, may, I am an occultist <laughs> because I don't oh, admit. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, really uh, the uh, challenges that I'm facing uh, with black people. Uh, with white people, uh, they understand uh, what I'm saying, but it's only for old people. Uh, they tell me that uh, it's too late. They, uh, they, they can't mm. change. Uh, they are already old. Uh, they're nearly approaching uh, their death, so they might as well continue to eat meat and ah. all that. So... That's uh, uh, basically uh, what uh, people uh, tell me where I, I go to, uh, to, 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 to speak to them on my, my speaking engagement. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the black people don't believe you. The white people are okay with it, but the old people say, nah, so I'm already almost dead. So just it doesn't yeah. matter. I'm just going to eat meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they just don't that understand that. Um, even if you are in your 70s and you change your way of eating, you can add even 10, 20 years. And the problem mm -hmm. is not really uh, to, uh, to really die younger or to die older, but it's the quality of your life. Because some people will yes. say, okay, uh, I'm, eating, uh, I'm eating meat and all that. People uh, can still live to uh, 100 years. Yes, they can still live to 100 years. But what quality of life when you are in and out of hospital, you can't, can't you can't take care of yourself anymore, or you are bedridden, mm -hmm. or you can't even go to the toilet. People need to help you. This is not a, a good kind of life. You need to have mm -hmm. a good quality of life where you can uh, still continue to take care of yourself. It's like, for example, uh, there's a doctor. I forgot his name. He was a uh, vegan. He, he died. Uh, he was 104 years old. Uh, he's an American as well, and. Uh, until uh, when he was 100 years old, he was still uh, driving. He still had his driver's license. He was still uh, mourning the, the law and, and all that. But you will see most people at his age, they are bedridden. They can't even function. Mm -hmm. 
and and he con- he was a doctor and he continued to operate uh, people until he was 95 at that age most people they, they can't even function anymore even their memory don't mm-hmm. work anymore so that's the quality of life which is more important wow that's amazing um when did you decide to write a book because i know that is a large undertaking in trying to kind of figure out how you wanted to how you wanted to look how you wanted to sound the formatting you know is it going to be a a workbook that goes with a lot of people like to do that so how did you kind of figure out the creative process of doing the book and then putting it out for other people to buy yeah so uh, for the process i thought to myself i didn't want to uh, write a big book because <laughs> most people when they uh, write a book it's a big book most people don't even finish the book they don't finish the book <laughs> and uh, it, 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 it's a little bit sad so for me I just wanted something that someone can buy. He can be maybe at the airport uh, waiting for his next connection and he can, he can read that. So the book is not, uh, it's mm. not a big book. It's uh, written in very simple uh, words. Uh, you don't have to be a scientist to understand. It's a very uh, the everyday uh, uh, word so that people can really understand that correctly. And like I've just said, it's a very small book so that people can really digest, but it's really, really uh, packed with uh, very uh, uh, solid information uh, that people uh, ca- can understand. Because in the book I talk about, uh, first of all, uh, I, I try to show people that we are frugivores and not uh, omnivores. And then I talk about my um, transformation. And then I talk about the um, the way the medical system deals with disease. And then oh. I, at the end, I talk about uh, the uh, what people I give people some tips that they can follow so that they can uh, improve the the the, uh, the quality of life so they can uh, create optimal health for themselves. So in a nutshell, that's how was the my my process uh, when uh, writing the book. What was the hardest part writing the book for you? Uh, I think the hardest part was uh, to uh, convey. Uh, the stuff that I wanted people to know because um, in the book I'm talking uh, about, for example, like I've just said, the medical system and uh, most people believe in the medication, uh, in the way the medical system deal with uh, uh, chronic diseases and all that, (laughs) chronic disease. And uh, that was very difficult to uh, convey that uh, because most people, uh, as soon as you start talking about that, uh, they shut down and they just don't want to hear anymore. So I was trying trying to uh, try to convey the message in a way that they can comprehend that and maybe see some truth uh, inside. What was the most enjoyable part? Uh, the most enjoyable part, um, I think it was uh, because uh, uh, my son was helping me uh, because I... Mm. Uh, to, for me to type is very, <laughs> I type very slowly. So it was uh, my son who helped me uh, to type all my book. And I remember even one day we stayed till uh, 3 a.m. to do that. Uh, so uh, my, my son was, uh, um, helped me a lot in uh, the book and uh, that really, really made me happy. So that, that quality time together uh, is yeah. what you remember the most. <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah. Maybe one day my son will be helping me do something besides throwing stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, my son, uh, that's how he, he helped me a lot. Even all the, if you look at all the design in my, um, my website, mm. uh, all this, it, it's him who, who did all the, the things for me. Yeah, he's, he's very uh, talented. Hey, shout out to your son. Shout out. Yeah. Um, where, I mean, when you said the medical system, that just kind of struck a chord with me because I can't sit up here and say the medical system is is bad or they have bad people, right? I think that there are people doing good work, but oftentimes we I don't feel like that. The first thing they do is, okay, what are you eating? Let's try to change those things first and try to get you to heal the the um, the natural way you know before they start putting you on all this medication right and there's tons of videos and tons of 
YouTubers and all of that stuff that can probably go into it way, way better than I can. But it's kind of plain to see that oftentimes the first thing they do is put you on medication. Oh, we do need to put you on medication. We need to get this taken care of. We need to do this. And now you have eight, eight, nine different pill bottles, you know, on your counter and that you got to take four of them in the afternoon and three of them in the morning, four of them at nighttime. And I don't like you're saying, like, that's just not the natural way to live. So let's do things the natural way first, because like you, you said everything that you was going through was reversed by the way that you changed your your diet, your nutrition, your mindset. So that's that's all I'm saying. You know, there's there's way more qualified people that can speak to it than I can. But when you start talking about the medical system and let's not even get into insurance and all of that stuff, man, that's <laughs> just going to send me off the off the deep end. So. Last thing, as far as like your work, how do you balance being a speaker and uh, doing the book and then doing the coaching as well as, you know, being with your family, you know, your son, your wife, I didn't see any, I don't know if you have other kids, but how do you balance all of these things being an entrepreneur and working for yourself? Yeah, so what I do is uh, I try to uh, structure my life, uh, um, really, really try to um manage my time uh, very uh, in a very good way. Uh, so, for example, I've got my calendar. Uh, every Sunday, I will sit and uh, prepare all the stuff that I have to do uh, for the uh, following week. So I would know, for example, if I have a coaching call, it will be at this time. If I have a discovery call, it will be at this time. If, for example, I have a speaking engagement, for example, on that day, I'm not going to have any coaching call. I will uh, just book that for that uh, speaking get engagement or the day before if I have to travel. So I really, really try to uh, uh, schedule my time uh, in a very efficient way so that I can have time with my kids and all that. For example, uh, uh, last Saturday, uh, we played Monopoly. I don't know if you know that game. Oh yeah. yeah, we play Monopoly. Yeah, uh, we play. We started, I think, at uh, eight thirty p.m. and we finish, I think, at one thirty in the morning. Yeah. Uh, so I try to um, uh, get some uh, quality time with, with with my kids. So it's just a question of um, just scheduling your time uh, in a good way. Yeah. So, like I said, I do that every Sunday. I will schedule uh, my my week, and so that I can uh, uh, juggle around all these tasks uh, with no problem. Wow. Man, it sounds like you got a real handle on life right now. You know, at 50, yeah. you said you were 53 or 54? Yeah, 53, yeah. 53. Man. And that just, that just goes to show that it's never too late. Like you were 47. Yeah. You know, a lot of people will go, well, this is kind of, you know, what it's going to be, you know, for the rest of my life. You said, no, I need to make a change at 47. And you went from, you know, you said you were working in the lab and now, you know, you're doing speaking, you've written a book. Six years, that's not a lot of time from this life that you had before to the life that you have now. So it's never too late for the people out there listening. Uh, so um, the last thing we do is our three what's. These are the questions I ask to every guest. And they're as short or as long as you want them to be. So just have at it. All right. What number one? What's an opinion that you have that will be considered unpopular? Yeah, the opinion that I would like, uh, which is unpopular, uh, it's uh, the medication. Stop eating meat. <laughs> it's the medication because, um, okay, like I said, most people know that when you are sick, you need to take the medication. And the medical system, they only address the root, uh, the symptoms and never the root cause. Because, for example, you go, uh, you, you've got um, the cold. The first thing that they will give you, some antibiotics, or they will give you some medication to stop that, that cough, or, or, or the cold that you've got. They will give you the medication to stop. But what they don't understand is that that's the way the body is getting, is trying to get rid of toxins, by giving you mm -hmm. diarrhea, by giving you uh, a cough by giving you a cold. Uh, this is the way the body is get, getting rid of toxins. Or, for example, you've got skin rashes. But when you take medication to stop that, 
it's like you are preventing the body from doing what it needs to do. Mm. But if you go at the root cause, you treat the root cause, you're not going to have a problem anymore. It's like, for example, uh, let's say you are driving your car and uh, suddenly on your, on your dashboard, you've got a flashing light telling you that you've uh -oh. got an oil leakage. You take your car to a garage and the mechanic just take uh, a fuse out and in the dashboard, there's no flashing light anymore. And it tells you that your car is, fi is fixed. You will think, what, is, what kind of crazy uh, mechanic is that? <laughs> and if you continue to drive the car, the, leak, the, the car will down. still continue to leak and your car will finish in a uh, scrapyard. And this is exactly what's happening when we take medication. When you've got symptoms, it's like the flashing light. Your body is telling you, fix me, fix me, fix me. And when you take mm. the medication, it's like you're shutting down. Uh, you're telling your body to shut up. And your body doesn't tell you anything anymore. And you think that, oh, because I've got no symptoms, it means that I'm okay. But now the disease will continue in silence. And one day, you're, gonna, you're going to have maybe a stroke. Maybe you drop dead. And people will wonder, mm. will say, but this guy was in good health or this woman was in good health. Ah, come, they die, so, they die so suddenly. But your body will give you symptoms. You took some medication. Symptoms are gone and you think that you're in good health. And usually when you take medication, the same medication will give you another uh, symptom. You will take another mm. medication to treat that new symptom. And like you said, right. you will find yourself with lots of medication which have never been studied together. They don't even know uh, that's, uh, what the combination of all this medication can give. And when you look at the medical right. medication, uh, the, the, the doctors as well, I was surprised to learn that they've got zero hours of nutrition during their medical school. And for mm. me, I got the impression that it's done on design. It's like a mechanic who doesn't know anything about the fuel. It doesn't mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. No. So for me, uh, it's uh, the medication that's it's most, most controversial. Okay, coming in with a bang here. All right, what number two? If you weren't talking about nutrition, educating people about nutrition, what would you be doing? Uh, I would still be working as a lab, optical lab technician because that's what mm. I was doing. So if I was not uh, talking, because I, I, I stopped that job because I wanted to do what I'm doing full time. So um, if I was not doing what I'm doing now, I would still be uh, doing that, that, that job. Uh, uh, I was working uh, as an uh, optical lab technician. What, what would draw you back to, to that job? Is that something that you really enjoyed, something that you went to school for? Uh, yes, I did really enjoy that job because I did that job for 17 years. I was even uh, the man oh. manager. The, um, I was managing the lab. But uh, with what I know now, uh, no, I, ju I just don't want to do that, that job anymore. <laughs> I just don't want because... Uh, People will think that maybe I'm, I'm crazy, uh, but um, even to wear glasses uh, in, in the system that we are on, uh, you go, uh, for example, uh, uh, here in England, you are three or four years old. You go to see an optician, he checks your eyes, and then they tell you that you need to wear glasses. And mm. um, for me, it doesn't make any sense. Because all these are just mm. a business. And as soon as you start wearing glasses, it's for the rest of your life. For me, I know that people need to wear glasses. And usually, apart from some people who have maybe some uh, genetic conditions, but for most people, if you don't eat the right food, maybe yes, when you are in your 40s, you will not be able to read anymore. Then you need some reading glasses. But just like that, you are three, four years old. You go to a, an optician and usually, and I'm talking about uh, my, uh, my own experience because I've got three kids who need to wear glasses. And for me, uh, they shouldn't be wearing glasses. Uh, and uh, maybe you go to an optician, uh, he doesn't, um, he asks you to read. Maybe if you don't understand what he's telling you, you say, or oh, maybe he asks you what this, this uh, letter is. You say the different letter. 
and they will say that you, you, you don't see well and they will prescribe you some, uh, some glasses. It's like my uh, last son, the last one. He was supposed to wear glasses, but at that time I said, no, I don't want that. Today is 12. When they, they prescribed him uh, his glasses, it was four. I said, no, today is 12. He's got no problem. But I was told that mm. he needed glasses. Today, he's, he's reading with no problem. He watched TV, no problem. But they tell me that he needed glasses. But for the first three, I didn't know. I said yes. And basically, now they need glasses for the rest of their lives. And I, I'm not really happy. So with what I know now, I would not go and work in that industry anymore. Do you think there's more of an issue with the, the process? Because you did say, like, okay, some people, they genetically their eyes just they they just aren't that great you know maybe their parents had glasses and their grandparents had glasses that kind of thing that's different than what you're saying though like sometimes again it is a symptom and not actually solving the cause of why they need glasses that's i think that's yeah. kind of where you were okay yeah. okay yeah yeah okay come hey man I, I think a lot of the stuff that what you're saying a lot of it does make sense, but it's gonna be some hot takes, man. It's gonna be a little polarized. Yeah, because, uh, and I think that's yeah, okay. Because, like, yeah, because when I, I I see, when I grew up, there were no kids who were wearing, wearing glasses. No kids. Mm. For all the people that I knew when I was growing up, no one were wearing glasses. That what does it mean? Does it mean that they they had problems? No. It's here because here it's a system. As soon as you are four years old, you need to go and see an optician and the optician will decide if you have to wear glasses or not according to what you're telling him uh, or according to the question he's asking you but for me i would say that if for example a kid is maybe uh, i don't know six seven years old and he tell you that no here i can't see then you will think think that is a kind of problem but it's just when they go to see the the, the opticians then they tell them that they've got problems. But back home, we didn't go to the opticians, and that's why they were no. I didn't know anyone who were wearing glasses. No one. And among all my friends, among all my families, I've never heard someone complaining that they were not. They they they, they had problems uh, seeing. But now that we are, uh, some of my friends are, uh, are in their fifties, forties, uh, and stuff like that. Now I see them wearing glasses. Because suddenly they, they can't read and stuff like that. For that, I uh, don't have a problem with that. But it's just when they are kids, when the, the brain is um, developing, I don't think that you should make them wear glasses unless they've got a genetic problem. So, so how do you, when would you test them? How would you know? And like if a kid is, if they can't see and they don't have glasses, then obviously that's going to slow their learning and that kind of thing. So, I mean, I guess, how would you change it? What would you, what would you um, suggest? Yeah, for example, the simple, simple way, you've got your kids, they, they go to school. For example, uh, when they come back from school, you need to make them read their books. You give them their books, you will know if they can, can see or not. For example, mm -hmm. when they, they told my kids, my, the, the, the last one that he was supposed to wear glasses. But what I was seeing is when I was making him read the books, his book from school, he didn't have any problems. He could read that properly. He was not struggling. So, for example, he would sit in the, the living room. I will ask him to read uh, the, the something on the TV at a long distance. He will read that properly. So for me, I would see that he, he didn't have any problem. Or, for example, you go out, you see a number, uh, a plate, a car, a plate uh, on a car. You'd ask him, can you uh, read that? He tells you, oh, it's this. From that, you can really, uh, you can see if it's got a problem or not. But the, the, the easiest way is when you are, uh, you make them read uh, when they come back from school, you will know if they can read or not. You will know that. And if they can't read, then they should go to the optometrist or should they yes. study reading better? No, no, okay. they need to go to an optometrist if they've got it. Because uh, the problem is I'm, I'm not against uh, uh, right. the doctors right. or the optometrist. I'm not against them. But it's just the system in which they put people like uh, 
in a will where they need to come back and that's that's what I'm I, I'm against. It's like for example, if you've gotcha. got a um, a car accident, you are bleeding. You're not gonna eat uh, some fruit to 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 stop the bleeding. You need to go and see a doctor. <laughs> you see. So the doctors they've got their places. They've got their places. Right. But what I'm saying is that, for example, to treat chronic diseases, then that's not the, the way to go. But if you have a trauma, you need gotcha. to see a doctor. The same way uh, you you don't see, you you have a problem. You, you've got your kids who can't read. Yes, they need to go and see the doctor because uh, the, the optometrist because they've got problems. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So yeah, it's about the process for you. It's about yeah. the process. If somebody needs something, yeah. they need to get it. But let's yeah. go through the the right way about figuring yeah. it out because we may be able to solve it in a more natural, different way to where they don't need to keep coming back and paying money and doing insurance and all of that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Because uh, which, as soon as you start wearing glasses, it's for the rest of your life. Yeah. Okay. Last what? <laughs> what advice would you give to someone in high school? So kids that are 14 to 18, maybe about to graduate, what advice would you give those kids? Uh, the advice that I will give them will put it, will maybe uh, be a little bit controversial, but what I can tell them is that when uh, we go to the uh, school system, is to uh, format us to become uh, workers in the system. For me, I think the best way for people to uh, become financially independent is to learn to. Uh, create their own businesses. And at school, they don't teach us those things. They teach us to go and work for other people. So for me, if I have uh, someone who is in uh, high school, I will tell them to start to think at uh, a problem that they can solve. And uh, with that, they can help other people and they can create their businesses and so that they can become financially independent. Because for me, for the way I'm seeing things, it's really, really difficult to become financially independent if you are uh, working like everybody else does. Mm -hmm. If you want to become financially independent, I think the best way is to uh, serve people. And then in return, these people will pay you and you can become financially independent. So that's why I would like them to do for them to create their own businesses so that they become financially independent instead of relying to have a job or something like that. Because when you, and most people, they will tell you that, oh, uh, when you have your own business, uh, you can, uh, there's no security and stuff. But no, for me, I think when you have a job, there's less security because at any time they can, you can get fired. And we've seen yep. with uh, the, the COVID, a lot of people have lost their jobs just like that. But for people who are right. in businesses, if they were flexible, they could uh, do that online, and a lot of people was able were able to um, shift their businesses. Yeah. yeah, you can shift and still be in business. A lot of times, like sometimes you you have to shift dramatically, but you are able to be agile instead of if you work as a teacher and they fire you. There is no in between, you know. Yeah. Or, <laughs> Teachers were kind of safe, but a lot of other people is like, well, you don't have a job. There's no, eh, we'll see, you know, so. Okay, yeah. wow. Um, man, you've given us a lot of stuff to, to think about and research and consider. So obviously, thank you for coming on. Now tell people where they can find you uh, as a resource, you know, for your speaking, for your book, and for your coaching as well. Uh, yes. So if uh, people want to uh, know a little bit more about me, uh, first of all, um, they can go on my website, which is oliviermancondo.com. It's oliviermancondo.com. Over there, they will be able to uh, purchase my book or they can go straight to Amazon. Uh, they can buy my book, which is The Plant-Based Nutrition, How It's Going to Change Your Life. And uh, they can as well uh, sign up to uh, my uh, masterclass. I've got a masterclass where they can uh, sign up to it. And uh, at the end of the masterclass, they will be able to uh, set up a discovery call with me. 
uh, and uh, if there's a fit, uh, they will they will be able to get enrolled in my uh, 16 uh, week one-on-one -on -one coaching program, where I uh, mostly help uh, women over 30 uh, to lose weight and uh, to reclaim their health, uh, because um, in my program, like I've just said, it's not only uh, to lose weight because uh, there are people who are uh, slim, but they are unhealthy. It's like, for example, my uncle. Uh, he was very slim, but he died last year. He was uh, 58. He died last year of uh, diabetes, but he was uh, slim. So uh, what I'm doing in my uh, program is not only uh, for people to lose weight, but to be in good health, because being good health and yeah. being uh, slim is uh, two things different. Or someone who is fit doesn't necessarily mean that they are in good health. So in my program, I really, really teach people how to uh, balance uh, all these things uh, to lose weight and to be in good health. And if uh, really they follow uh, most of the stuff that I do, uh, they will be able to live a disease-free life because it's possible to live without being sick. And that's what really what I want people uh, to understand, that it's possible to live uh, without being sick, even if we are uh, getting old, just like me. I was 46, I'm 53 now. I'm not uh, sick anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Olivier, for coming on and sharing your expertise, sharing your experiences and continuing to help. Uh, make sure you all go check out OlivierMoncando.com. Uh, um, and of course, follow me on YouTube, IG, TikTok, Facebook. I'm pretty much everywhere at the Living Numbers Podcast. Make sure you guys rate and review five stars. Leave a like if you're watching on YouTube. And um, thank you all, and I will see you in the next ramble. Thank Voila. you, Johnny.